In this video tutorial, I'm going to explain how I have the Futaba character displays working. I got a lot of these displays on eBay for $30 for a lot of 25 of them. A few of them was damaged in shipping as noted here with the white getters and the missing vacuum seal. The thing is, these displays, the data sheets no longer available for these displays. Try contacting Futaba. So going nowhere fast with the Japanese on trying to figure this out. Now I might, you might have a better tie than I do with, with the Japanese and Futaba, but I don't. So I had to start from scratch. Notice this board here, I cut one of the displays off because this was another one that had an unfortunate accident shipping. Noted by the display, we have our DC-DC converter. Then we have a rather small pinout array of the board. A big big ground plane runs away across. And then um, you have a noted serial chips, serial shift registers. Uh, and two looks like a hex inverter TTL 7414 and then I got a 74165 which is a 16-bit parallel in serial out or might even be an 8-bit parallel in serial out. I'm not too sure. But the problem is with no data sheet, I didn't know the bit pattern, how it was going to be clocked in, the pinouts, or anything. That's the whole issue I had here. Now, the first thing I decided to do was take off a couple of these chips in connector and noted at the connector we have pretty much labeled on the other side of your 5 volts. There's a 12 volt point marked in solder mask, and then there's a 5 volt point marked in solder mask. Traced it back, so I figured out that we have our two 12 volts tied together here. We have a ground, then we got a signal line, another ground, another signal line, then another ground, and then another signal line. Uh, yeah, another signal line. Then we have our 5 volts. And then we have another ground. Anyway, so pretty much at that respect, I jotted down a couple of uh, pinouts here. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but from uh, I had the, the two 12 volts, the ground, and then I had all the grounds marked, had the 5 volt marked, but then I still didn't know what the three signal lines were. But since assumptions that since this has no microcontroller, it all it's all shift registers, I pretty much figured one has to be strobe, one has to be data, either input or output or both, and one has to be clock. So I'll build a simple analog circuit. Of course, I've disassembled it with three shift registers and three buttons and clocked them until I figured out which pins were which. Then I figured out what was data I.O., I figured out what was clock and which one was strobe. Because the strobe pin also blanked the display, which is a good indicator of that of that's the enable line that loads the latches inside the shift register chips. Then I had to kind of get an idea of how many bits I was dealing with. And then there's an OKI C1164. Notice it's just a C when it's supposed to be MSC1164. You're not going to find a data sheet under C1164. You have to put the Oki prefix, which is MS. Uh, Toshiba, no data sheet. Tried, can't find it. So, point point there is, I haven't. I, I was pretty much in the dark with these displays. Then, basically, after I wired up my circuit diagram to clock out a single bit pattern, I was clocking it at a very slow rate just to see how the registers were being filled just to see how the, the data is being manipulated inside the display screen. And I pretty much, after figuring out that data, I come to this conclusion here. This basically says I have 148 total bits. The upper block is made of a seven by, or let me think, an eight by nine matrix. So each cell each one of these cells is an 8 by 9 matrix plus two cursors and then there's 20 grids that go across 
And at this point, I pretty much said, okay, there's 20 grids, there has to be 20 bits there. And then there's two arrows or cursors, there's two more bits. And then I got the lower block data and the upper block data for row one and one, row two, so I had, it, no matter what, it had to be 148 bits. And somewhere in that range anyway. Um, but then, after investigating this a little bit more, that parallel and serial out shift register is used for something. What, I don't know until recently, I figured out that it is a hardwired a device ID, so you have to clock out 16 bits, between 8 to 16 bits before you can clock in your data. So, I don't really care what those bits are, so I just pretty much piss them off the end of the shift register, meaning I clock in 16 bits of random data, and then clock in my 148 bits of valid data. So it just pisses it off the end of the shift register and you don't have to worry about it. But after doing my bit manipulations, I figured out that the upper block, which is the top row, has to be clocked in first, most to least. So your, your, uh, your scan patterns here, your upper scan pattern is there, and your lower scan pattern is there. So this is the beginning bit. It goes up here this way, and then back down and up, back down and up. So your scan starts here. And your scan ends there, almost like the Baird uh, mechanical TV, in a similar fashion. So at that point, I was able to figure out how these bits were mapped out for characters, and how the direction had to go here. You got clock and upper, lower arrows, and then grids. So then, after having that info, I could lay out the rent and the mapping I was going to use for my CPU. And then once I had that info, I wrote a little program for the um, Visual Basic, if I can find it, um, there it is, I wrote this simple little program right here, and what this is, is a, a character map, so I can draw the number zero in a simple bit pattern. as such maybe backwards anyway make binary and it's going to put a simple binary pattern to be used as it's clocked into the shift register so once I had that I could pull up my little program in AVR studio and notice if I go to my character it's a huge character map if I go to my uh, zero if I compare to zero I load my memory with this bit pattern Notice it's, a, notice it's a similar bit pattern and watch here. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much how this display works. A lot of program code, and the program code emulates the Noritake T23 command set. So you can use a parallel port in a program such as LCD Hype, which is what I use, to take the incoming parallel data processor does a conversion and a code manipulation, converts it into segment data that follows this bit pattern, and loads it to the display. And the display scans sequentially using time division multiplexing from here to here. So everything is clocked in from most to least. So after finding the consistency there, I can do 20 to 1 in 20 grid bits. So notice that's bit 20, and that's bit 1, or well, 0 and 19, if you want to count 0 but that's pretty much it and the results are actually good and you can find it in my other video